Okay, in this video we're going to use Revit conceptual massing to make a horizontal tessellation as shown here. And I'm just going to kind of orbit around so you can get a better view of this. And the great thing about this exercise is we run into a lot of problems in Revit. Not necessarily problems, but some nuances that we just have to be aware of. And hopefully someone out there can comment on some of the things that we're doing that might make our life easier down the road. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to the big R and opening a new conceptual mass. And I'm going to choose the mass template. Now, we're going to work completely in the 3D views. And I'm going to go to my 3D front view by clicking on the view cube. And I'm going to set up some reference planes because reference planes allow us to snap in Revit. So we're going to set up kind of some grid lines and, and use this as a formal logic to trace from. So I'm going to select this reference plane that was default in the conceptual mass template. And using my control key, I'm going to drag this off to the right. And you see how it moves in all directions here. I'm going to add my shift key. So it's a it's a control shift key to make a copy and keep it ortho. And I'm just going to drag that out. And I'm going to set this temporary dimension to 8 feet. Okay, and I'll again use my shift control, drag this new one out, set my temporary dimension to 25 feet. And I'm going to drag out one more, shift control, and set this temporary dimension to 7 feet. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to keep it symmetrical. So 8 feet, 25 feet, and 7 feet. Okay, so now I have some vertical reference planes to work with. And now I'm going to copy the levels as well. So I'm going to select level 1, shift control and drag it up. And we'll set this level to 9 feet. And shift control, drag it up. And I'll set that to 25 feet. Okay, so now I have some reference lines, or rather reference planes and levels that I can snap to when I draw my geometry. Let's take a look at this in the 3D view. And we'll see that the Revit conceptual mass has this front back reference plane as default. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that so that we can draw our geometry on. So I'm going to select it, shift control, drag it forward and I'm going to set that to 100 feet. Okay, and as long as this reference plane is selected that's going to be my current work plane that I'm going to draw on. So I'll go to my front view. Okay, zoom back in here and I'm going to draw reference lines. So I'm going to choose reference, line, Make surface from closed loops. We'll get to that later. I'll leave that off. 3D snapping can be off for now. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my geometry. And you'll see I can snap to the reference planes and the levels. Okay, and this will be my geometry. Okay, and that should show up if I orbit the 3D on the reference plane that we just created. So next I'm going to make two copies of this. So I can select both the reference plane and the geometry I drew using the control key to add to my selection. And again I can do the shift control drag, okay, keeping that ortho. Now I want to control the distance between these two 
copies. So I'm going to select just a gray area to deselect, and I'm going to select my reference plane, and I'm going to change that temporary dimension to 8 feet. Okay, with that reference plane selected, I'm going to select the reference line that we drew and do my shift drag again to make my second copy. Select just the reference plane and set that to 8 feet. Okay, just hitting escape. Okay, now we have a pretty good setup here. So first thing I want to draw is there's a diamond at the top of this and I'm going to draw that on level 3. And just to show you, if I go to my front view and zoom in, here's my level 3. So I can set level 3 as the current work plane to draw on and draw this diamond. And I'm going to do that from the top view, the top 3D view. I'm going to click on that top down arrow from my view cube and zoom in here. And I'm going to go to reference, draw a reference line. And I want to draw that on level 3. Okay, so I'm going here where it said reference plane, going to the pull down, and I'm picking level 3. Okay, and that diamond is going to look like this. Hit escape and orbit back to 3D. Okay, so I have the diamond drawn. I'm going to select that diamond and I'm going to use the magical create form button to create the surface. And I'm going to choose the surface option. Okay, so we have the diamond. Now, I'm going to introduce us to a better way to do this instead of using the create form when I draw my next set of reference lines I'm gonna tell Revit to make a closed or to make a surface from a closed loop so I'm gonna click on reference and you see here make surface from closed loops I'm gonna check that on now I'm no longer gonna be drawing on a level or a reference plane I'm gonna be drawing in 3D so to do that I have to check on my 3D snapping. Okay, something else we have to be conscious of. To draw in 3D with 3D snapping on, this needs to be set to draw on face. Sometimes it'll go to draw on work plane and your 3D snapping won't work. So if you run into that, make sure draw on face is selected. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my next set of reference lines. So I'm going to go from here to here to here and I'm going to close it and it's going to create my surface. And I can do that one more time if I orbit over and do this on the other side. So again reference, it's a reference line, it's drawing on face, make surface from closed loops is on, 3D snapping is on, and I can go ahead and draw this side. And it makes my closed surface for me. Okay, so next we have to set up some more geometry here. And what we're going to make next, we're going to draw it on, going to draw it on the level one work plane. So I'm going to set my level one work plane to be current just by by zooming out here and selecting level one okay that will make it current and this is going to allow me to snap to anything that intersects level one so it should snap to these reference planes so I'm going to go ahead and draw a reference line I'm going to turn off to make surface from closed loops turn off 3D snapping placement plane is set to level 1 and I'm just going to draw a polyline here okay so I have that polyline next I want to move it 
from the base of level 1, I want to move it to the midpoint of these lines. Okay, I'm going to try to do that or demonstrate doing that in this 3D view by selecting this reference line. And I'm going to type in the shortcut for move, which is MV. And see, I don't really get my snaps where I want them, but let's say that I want it to snap there. You see, it's only moving in the XY plane. I can't really snap it up to those angled lines. So I'm going to hit the escape key and I'm going to go to my front view, my 3D front view. And just to give you guys a visual of where we're at, I'm going to move it from where it's at here up to the midpoint of this angled line. So I'm going to type in MV for move. I'm going to pick, now you see I'm getting my snaps in this 3D front view. I'm going to pick this point and I want to snap it up here to the midpoint. You see it's still constrained to that XY plane. It's only moving horizontally here. So what I can do is I can uncheck constraint and that allows me now to move it up vertically in the world Z axis and snap to the midpoint of this angle line. Hit escape a few times, orbit around, and now I have that line exactly where I want it. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some more surfaces. So, again, using reference, reference line, I want to make surface from closed loop. I want 3D snapping to be on, <clears throat> making sure that this is draw on face. And I'm going to go ahead and draw some reference lines. We'll make this side. Okay, we're getting our surface. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Reference line. All those good things are turned on. I'm going to draw this triangle. Okay, hit escape. Now, what's happened here is it's not drawing the closed surface. It's not drawing the surface from closed loops. And that's because we're having points in the same place now. Points already existed, and this will happen to you in Revit. Um, so you can either, when, when it doesn't make the surface for you, you can select the reference lines using the control key, and then use the magical create form button, Okay, which is sometimes a little tricky to select those reference lines. And I have a little trick for us. What we can do is we can turn off the reference points. And with the reference points turned off, it'll make surfaces from closed loops. So we're going to do that by going to the visibility and graphics, and the shortcut is VG. And under annotation categories, under reference points, we're going to uncheck points and we're going to click OK. Now those points are turned off. So when I go ahead and draw my next reference line, it's going to make... Now we're going to get this every time we place a point, which is annoying and maybe someone out there can post a comment for a better way to do this, but I'm just going to keep hitting the Enter key. and it's going to make my surface. So I prefer that method over trying to select the reference lines, which, which could be a, a, a bit painful. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my remaining two faces here. Keeping my hand on the Enter key. Okay, and we got one more to go here. Okay, so we've we've completed this side. So the next thing to do is go ahead and mirror it 
to the other side. So I'm going to do this in a top view. Now, what's important here is the reference lines are selected and on. I've run into some situations where I go to VG and under annotation categories, I uncheck reference lines just to see my geometry and it won't let me mirror without those reference lines on. So you just want to make sure that those are turned on. So I'll turn that back on. Okay, and I'm going to go to a 3D top view. Just clicking on the view cube. Okay, so I'm going to select everything that we need to mirror over and I'm going to use a window selection so I'm going to go from left to right and I don't need the diamond so I don't need to include that in the entire window so I have what I need to be mirrored over and I'm going to use the pick pick mirror axis from the ribbon and I'm going to pick our center reference line or reference plane and I'm going to get an error if that's okay it's just giving me the error of identical points hit escape and we have that mirrored over to the other side so while we're here I can take this and just copy it over several times so we're gonna select it I'm gonna type in CO for copy now if I try to copy this if I if I pick a point it's not allowing me to move to the right or left it's only moving down or up and I have a feeling, feeling it has something to do with the original reference line, reference lines that we created being on those vertical reference planes. So what I need to do is I need to uncheck constraint. And now I can move right and left. You just have to make sure that you're moving your mouse straight horizontal and it should snap to that horizontal position. And we need to copy this over 16 feet. Put 16 feet enter it's going to give me an error I just hit escape close that error window out and I'm going to do this several times I'm going to s and notice it didn't let me copy multiple it only let me copy it one time so I'm going to select everything type in CO for copy uncheck constrain pick a point now I have two of these so I'm going to go over 32 feet hit escape close the error window and select all of this and make one last copy CO for copy I wish Revit would remember that I don't want to constrain it but it doesn't I'm going to uncheck it pick a point and this time go over 64 feet okay hit escape look at this in 3D now okay so here we have our horizontal tessellation so just to get a better look at this let's go to VG and turn off our reference lines so we'll go to annotation categories and I'm going to turn off the reference lines I'll leave the reference planes on Okay, so we get a better look at this and to get an even better look let's turn on the shadows so I'm going to go down to my view control bar and turn my shadows on okay so here you have it the horizontal tessellation